Hey folks, welcome back to Bullets and Brass. Today we're talking about fly fishing and specifically, what is the effective bare minimum? What is your practical lower limit, minimalist gear to go fly fishing? First off, you need a rod and do your own research. There are a lot of videos about this. I suggest the series by Mad River Outfitters. They have a good series of videos on getting started in fly fishing. Use that resource. The key to remember with fly fishing is you're casting your line. So the weight of rod has to do with the weight of line, which is then going to determine how big and fluffy and wind resistant a fly you can throw. Or reverse of that, how big a fluffy fly you want to throw determines what weight line you need, which then determines what weight rod you need because the rod and the line are matched and then everything else scales from there. So you need a rod. I'm not gonna pull out my rod here. It's nine feet long and it's only two pieces. So get a rod, get a reel. There are combo kits that include the rod, reel, backing, fly line, usually a leader. They are probably a good place to start. This is a fly reel. They are, generally speaking, if you're used to regular kind of fishing reels, these are very simple tools. They range in price from dirt cheap to super expensive. From the perspective of using it, if you want drag, you're going to have to buy a modern style reel. Your fly line is probably the most important piece of this element. <clears throat> the reel, eh, get something that works, you're good. Uh, I would not spend a bunch of money on your first reel. The, black, the backer, eh, whatever. The fly line is essential. Do not cheap out on your fly line. Uh, yes, you can buy fly line for $20. Spend $50. <clears throat> if you spend $50 on your fly line and your total fly line reel you know, rod setup is $200, great. We won't get into all the different you know, kinds of fly line. Do your own research, Mad River Outfitters, other websites. Just keep in mind that you probably want to wait forward, and if you're brand new to this, you probably want a floating line. The actual weight of the line you want and the exact type is going to depend on what you're fishing for, where you're fishing, what kind of fly you want to throw, and so on. At the end of your fly line is going to be a leader. And I see a lot of confusion where people think like it's leader plus tippet and so on. Your leader includes tippet. That's why it says, in this case, 5X down here. The 5X is the tippet. That's the size of tippet already on here. You only need more tippet if you've cut off some of your, your leader. You're going to cut off some of your leader because every time you change flies, you're taking a little off, right? Tippet is part of your leader. You don't need to take this out of the package and then add tippet. That is just going to create problems for you. It's gonna make your life difficult. If you know roughly what size fly you're throwing, like you're gonna stay within two or three hook sizes, and, and bulk and fluff of the fly, because it's not just the hook size, it's the overall bulk. You could do one size leader and one size tippet. If you're smart about it, you have two sizes of each, because then you've got your upper range and your lower range. You can throw really fluffy or a little smaller and not have issues. But honestly, if you're just starting out, keep it simple, throw one general kind of fly in terms of wind resistance and weight, one leader type, one tippet size, you're good. By the way, tippets either come in single packs, two packs, three packs, buy the three pack. <laughs> uh, it is usually significantly cheaper. You will screw up leaders. Uh, it just is a fact of life when you're starting out. Even once you've been doing it a while, you'll still screw them up. Your fly line, on the other hand, is a long-term purchase. Fly line does get replaced, but it isn't something you wear out if you treat it properly in a season. Now, at the end of that fly line and leader, you have flies, and you need something to put them in. Uh, you can buy as many flies as you want. Again, I say stick with a size, stick with a, a, a wind resistance level, so that you don't have to keep changing your leader and tippet or worry about that it doesn't match your rod, that you've gone outside the realm of normal. You can do it, I'm just saying that as a, as a beginner, you want to make life easy for yourself. This is a very basic box. It is 
you know, house branded, as you can see. Uh, yeah, Jay Stocker, fly fishing. If you are just starting out, I would start with a box like this. In, I mean, this is a little on the small side. This is a little small and thin uh, for streamers, which is what I suggest you start with. But keep it small and keep it something that holds the individual flies. Don't get one where it's they're just sitting in there because if it's windy out, you go to pull a fly out, you're, they're gonna go flying. They're, they're too light and fluffy to have them loose. So something like this, silicone, foam, they, they've got different materials they put in there. The hook is not digging into that material, it is slid into a slot. I mean, you can go as simple as this. It, this is just a little plastic cup. But you can imagine how out in the field, you go to open that, the flies are just loose in here. And if they're not little tiny things that have no wind or no, yeah, no wind resistance, gone. You drop this, they're not, they're not held in place. Now, if you're throwing like the game changers and things like that, uh, look it up. You're gonna need a box designed for them. Uh, a box like this, very unlikely to work for a game changer. The last two, really three items you need are some tools. A pair of hemostats. These are basically needle nose pliers that lock. You can click them closed so they, they pinch and clamp. The key here is these are your uh, fishing pliers. If you're fishing for a larger species, something with big teeth, that you need more reach, they make longer ones, they make pliers, but you want something that locks. These are, are perfectly fine for bass, trout, uh, panfish. These are just loon brand, basic stuff. Don't spend a ton of money, but don't buy the dirt cheap ones. You'll see a lot of reports where they just broke, the, they, the handles couldn't take the tension, they weren't properly heat treated. The next to last item you need is a pair of nippers. And again, don't buy the, the absolute cheapest, but you don't need to buy the fancy ones. They are literally, effectively a pair of nail clippers, but nail clippers are not designed for this task. It's got a needle, that is for cleaning out the, the hook, the eye hole in the hook, because when flies are made, they put a little dab of glue on what is considered the head of the fly. It's to keep all the extra wraps of line solid, it kind of finishes it off. Well, that glue usually winds up in the eye of the hook. Gunk gets in there, it just, it helps. So the last item, I don't have mine yet, it's on the way, is something to keep these on you. You need some sort of retriever, you know, a zinger, a lanyard of some sort. You have to decide if you want a clip-on, a pin-on, a, a, you know, one with a little clamp, whatever system you want to use. Keep these attached to you, because if you drop these in the water, good luck. Uh, it is one of the reasons why they're attached. And this is bright yellow. Because I figure, at least with the bright yellow, if I do drop it, I'm going to be able to see it and find it. Whereas if it was all black, good luck. So that's really it. You don't need a ton of stuff. It's just like starting out with a Zebco, with a bobber, a hook, and some worms. You can do it. You'll eventually want more stuff. However, one of the beauties of fly fishing is how minimalistic it can be. The freedom from having a ton of gear, of carrying a bunch of stuff. A lot of people that come to it from uh, real based fishing comment how liberating it was to not be carrying a bunch of rods, not have tackle boxes full of lures, that it was very freeing and much more intimate with the environment to keep it simple. And that is my suggestion as well. I think that the gear becomes a distraction more than a help. Anyway, take care, have fun, stay safe, and I'll see you on the water.